Well, good afternoon. It is about 4.30 on Thursday, April 27th. And I am here at the Access at Go Home Lake. Um, I am planning to do a one-nighter. Um, the weather's supposed to be really crappy after tomorrow afternoon, around four o'clock tomorrow it's supposed to start raining. And then Saturday and Sunday is supposed to be really crappy out and cold and I don't wanna camp in that. Um, I don't mind camping in the rain, but when it's cold as well, it's just kind of boring and there's not much to do. And uh, so um, I've got maybe, I think about four kilometers of paddling to do. And then I'm gonna do the portage into Gibson River. Uh, there's a couple of nice campsites there that I've seen on day paddles before. And I'm hoping to get one of those and just spend the night. And then tomorrow I'm gonna spend the day exploring uh, as long as the weather's beautiful and then plan to come out late afternoon before the rain starts. So um, I'm really excited. I'm a little bit nervous because I have never camped in this area, um, but I have day paddled and um, I know it fairly well. I've day paddled it quite a few times. So um, canoes over here up on the car and uh, I was a little concerned with the water. As you can see, it's really, really low here, which is the opposite for everywhere in the world right now. <laughs> Um, but I drove the road just to see and it looks like it's it's deep enough to get through to the main part of the lake and uh, I should be fine so there's nobody here right now there are a bunch of cars in the parking lot uh, but I think they're mostly for speed boats and cottages and uh, people doing work on cottages and stuff like that so um, I'm gonna get moving here and get everything unpacked and get on the water all right, it is 4.45 and I'm ready to hit the water. Everything's all packed up and I'm ready to go. The wind has actually died down too while I've been uh, unloading everything and parking the car, so double bonus. It really stinks right here. <laughs> I don't know if it's because of all the mud and the shallow water or what, but ooh. <laughs> Hopefully that improves very soon. All right, I am already roasting. Um, I'm glad that I took my base layer off. I had my base layer on today while I was at work because I don't want to be cold. I actually had the space heater on at work all day. Um, but that's just how I roll. Um, I'm curious if anyone knows of any supplements and things that I could take to make me feel warmer, if that's possible. I read something about magnesium, magnesium maybe. Um, but if anybody takes anything for that, could you send me a message or let me know? Because I am cold all the time and I really need to fix this issue. <sighs> Alright, we're coming up to the area where the marina is. Um, there's a lot of people putting boats in the water right now. So I just have to be cognizant of that. And I probably won't film too much up here until I get through this area. And uh, away from... A very very small amount of people that are here. I mean it's a Thursday afternoon but it is gorgeous and again if people are looking at the forecast and seeing the shitty weather coming then they might just be out today and tomorrow like I am to take advantage before the crappy weather comes in. Anyway that's about it for now. It's really nice out. It's very warm. A whole bunch of clouds coming in which is surprising because it's not supposed to be Cloudy tonight, it's supposed to be clear, but that's okay. All right, just coming up to the narrow section before the water opens up, and uh, no sign of any boats, so that's good. I did hear one flying around out on the lake up there, probably somewhere, um, but it didn't come through the channel, so happy about that. This is actually the section here. Uh, not this section right now that I'm going through, but the second uh, one is where I almost ended up getting smacked under the rocks. So, I'm glad there's no speedboats coming through at the moment. Alright, well, after um, making my video from McCray Lake I saw a trip, uh, I got three or four requests from people asking to talk about cold water paddling. Now, I'm not an expert, I never claim to be. I'm not a professional, I'm not a teacher. Uh, I do have my kayak instructor beginner's license, but other than that, 
um, not so much um, in my courses because I've backcountry camped for over 20 years. But um, I started wearing a dry suit when I was taking my courses with Ontario Sea Kayak. Uh, I never used to wear one before. I would go out in cold water and really had no clue how dangerous it could be. Um, for my instructor course with Ontario Sea Kayak, I purchased my dry suit. Yes, they are very expensive. This one cost me $900 US and I got a deal on it, uh, plus shipping. Um, the reason to wear a dry suit is so that if you do end up in the water, um, it will keep you dry, which will help to prolong your time in the water um, from getting hypothermia and possibly uh, dying or passing out. Um, you can wear a lot of warm clothes underneath the dry suit and go in the water totally and nothing will get wet as long as you don't have any holes in it. Um, in addition to that, I always wear my PFD, um, safety first. And uh, if you do not have a dry suit and you just cannot resist getting out on the water when the temperatures are this cold, um, you should try to wear a wetsuit. Uh, a wetsuit you will get wet in, but what it does is it helps uh, to keep your body warm with your body temperature uh, inside the neoprene. Um, it is not ultimate, but it's better than nothing. And if you do not have either, uh, I suggest going on to smaller waterways, uh, staying close to shore, and having a ditch kit with you. Uh, you can look up on Google um, different kinds of ditch kits. Uh, basically, you want to have uh, a dry bag, it's totally waterproof. You want to have um, some dry clothes, some warm clothes, maybe an emergency blanket, maybe some first aid items, uh, something to start a fire with, maybe a little bit of tinder or fire sticks, uh, some waterproof matches, maybe a couple of granola bars and some snacks, and a communication device in case you need to call for help. Those are the most important things in water um, and make sure it's secured into your boat. A lot of people suggest that you have it secured to you uh, in case you dump so that it doesn't fall out of your boat or if you get attached, detached from your boat somehow you still have it with you. Make your way to shore as quickly as possible and uh, get into your dry warm clothes, start a fire and get warm as soon as possible and call for help. Um, I would never go out on big water. I would suggest to go out on big water if I didn't have a dry suit on. Um, and you can also pull up uh, the water temperatures. I just posted it a little while ago, I think last week. Um, but it's very easy to find it online. And it will tell you how long uh, you can survive or are expected to survive um, by how long you're in the water and what temperature it is. May long, I'm doing a trip in Tomogamy. I will most likely not wear my dry suit on that trip um, because I'm not in big water. I'm going to be in rivers and uh, I'll always be fairly close to shore. And I have a bag full of, <laughs> you know, items that will help me survive. Um, I'm also trained, taken a lot of courses, how to get in and out of the canoe, how to get in and out of my kayak, um, wilderness first aid, all of those things. So. Um, Training also helps if you can get some, take some courses, and uh, do your best to stay out of the water. People always say, hey, I don't plan on going in, but things happen, and you never know. So it's always better to be safe than sorry. So for those people who are asking, I hope that helps. And um, if you have any questions, feel free to email me anytime at camperchristina.outlook.com. Again, I'm not an expert. This is just what I've been taught to do and trained to do in the courses that I've taken, and um, hopefully it helps. There's two turnoffs to the left. One I took uh, a couple years ago. I was day tripping. I wanted to get make it interesting, see if I could get through. Uh, I definitely scratched up the canoe a lot on that trip. Uh, the water was super shallow. There were tons of beaver dams. It was pretty crazy, uh, but it was fun going through. And then I paddled on the Gibson River and then I came back through the Portage, which is the way I'm going to go. I'm not taking the uh, crazy route with the brand new canoe uh, and my packs and stuff. And I'll leave that for someone else that was a fun adventure, but been there, done that, and I'm over. Well, I found the headwind just as I turned. 
turn to uh, go down this little waterway towards the portage. The wind just picked up like crazy. And uh, I don't know if you can see the dark clouds behind me, but um, there was no uh, probability of precipitation for tonight at all. So I'm hoping they're just uh, ineffective clouds that don't do anything except block the sun. I'm docked at the portage. It was a lot easier than I thought it would be. Um, I'm gonna get ready to portage. Probably take the canoe first. Um, probably should take the pack first just to see. But uh, I like getting the canoe done with. It is 5.45 now. <laughs> I like to take my time, I guess. Uh, a little bit of schmucky schmuck here on the portage, but I mean, I'm wearing a dry suit and water shoes, so totally unaffected. <laughs> um, and I am on my way, and I have the canoe. I was all prepared for this big portage. I'm like, good, I need to practice. I need to get in shape. I think that was like a 90 meter, not a 900. I don't know where I got that number from, but look at the water just rushing out of here. And I wanted to stay on the campsite over there. There's a really nice one down here by the waterfalls, but uh, the portage I took last time when I was day tripping, I will never do that portage again. It was horrible. It was so bad. I scratched up the canoe so bad. And um, I thought maybe I could enter it from the left side. Because there was a trail at the campsite walking to go to like that part of the river. So I don't know. I might go take a peek. I don't know. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, look at all the shoreline is gone here. The water's high here. <laughs> There's really anywhere to put the boat. This was all, this is where I put the boat last time and launched it. The rocks are underwater here. Wow. Quite the current. Well, maybe I will aim for that campsite. Um, I'm going to go get my bag and come back and then I'll check the sunrise, sunset locations, and all that and make a decision. So find somewhere to put the boat down. Look at how crazy this water is. So that other campsite is right over there. But I have to go through that. I could go all the way to the edge. Not bad there, but there's some crazy, crazy wet water right there. <laughs> oh my gosh. me one minute to get from one side to the other so very 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 small portage um, I don't know why I thought it was so big but I'm glad I was wrong <laughs> right, this video is for Riley um, Riley had a tip about an easier way or an easy way to get your pack up instead of flipping it around like I do even though I really I'm used to that way and I'm good with it but I wanted to try Riley's way. I just have to remember how they did it. I know the bag has to be upside down. I just don't 
remember which way. This way. Yeah? Yeah, okay. So, bags upside down. And then lift it up. And have, oh, very nice. That was so easy. I think I'm going to do that from now on. Thanks, Riley. Oh, oh, shoulder's still not good. That was fantastic. I'm going to try that again. That was great. Thanks, Ry. All right, let's go down this long portage. All right, well, I would love to film this, but it's going to be difficult as it is, and I don't want to put myself in danger. Um, so basically, I just have the canoe and the paddle. I'm going to take the paddles out and put them there. I've got the pack and the food bag there on this ledge. So I'm going to very carefully bring the canoe down into the water and stand in here. Uh, this is actually where I loaded and unloaded it, like way over here. This is all underwater now. Um, so put the canoe there and then throw the bags in and make my way that way. And uh, see if I can get to that waterfall campsite. It's not too far down actually, but Again, it's a 24-hour trip, so I don't want to do anything too crazy. And tomorrow I can paddle around and look for stuff and um, look for wildlife and whatever. So, yeah, you can see the sun's starting to come back out. And um, I'm just going to check where the sunset and the sunrise is going to be. All right, so quick check with my compass. Sunset over here. Sunrise over here-ish. I think at that waterfall campsite, I might get both. Uh, at this one, I'm not gonna get either, most likely. And I gotta go through that. I mean, I would go way down to the end there, but that's just crazy. <laughs> I do have a dry suit on, but um, I'm even a little concerned about this current here. Like, it's pretty pretty big, too. But off we go, procrastinating. <laughs> All right, that wasn't too bad. I'm grateful those skid plates are there and they're so thick. Um, probably be a little bit more difficult getting out of the water than back in, but I'm on the river and it is moving. I hope I can get this campsite over here. I hope nobody's on it. And uh, I hope I can get to it because I'm gonna have to paddle against this current back. <laughs> but I will if I have to. You don't have to paddle. <laughs> so that is called the three shoots up there where that campsite is. Um, I'm not sure exactly if that's where the campsite is or if it's the next waterfall down that's called the three shoots or maybe this is the first of the two three shoots. Just know on the map it says three shoots. It does not look like there's a way in on the left side, but again, I'm not sure how far down it is. I've only been here once. I think it was two years ago. So I can hear the water though, so I must be not that far away. A lot of rushing water. Heads. A bunch of them over here. Oh, there they go. Scared them off. Alright, let's see what's going on here. I gotta be really careful. I don't get caught up in a current and pull down a waterfall. So, <laughs> oh man, I cracked myself up. Um, I started heading towards the waterfall and the water started moving faster and faster and I kind of chickened out and turned around. <laughs> uh, I'm not even anywhere near where the falls are yet and I can't see what's ahead. I don't know what's ahead. I know that getting off of that portage on the right side is really, really gnarly and because the water's so high, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get out by myself and I just don't trust it. I would rather paddle along the shore here across from these uh, rapids coming out of the dam and go to that campsite up on the left or maybe even one further up the river. There's a whole bunch of them. 
and uh, I think that's a better option. So we'll see how that goes, but if not, then I might just go back out and go home. Happy to say that I'm going to be taking my white water course finally. I've been wanting to take one for a long time. And um, it's going to be in June. I'm taking it with a bunch of really awesome, fun people. We're camping for the weekend and then doing the whitewater course. So it'll be great. I'm really excited for that. Look at this car, it's just crazy. I'm not even close yet. Um, still a ways away from. It's so funny how fast I went that way with the current and how long it's taking me to go back. Oh my gosh. Look at this. There's a fire pit right here. This must be a campsite. This is fire pit underwater. Okay, I can't do that. I have to uh, keep the camera in the holder. So as soon as I stop paddling, I'm going to go back down the river. I guess that's the worst that can happen. I don't leave in a dump or anything, but just take me right back down the river. That's the landing that I came uh, from. I went down there very, very quickly. <laughs> Way down there. Turned around, came back. That's where I got stuck right there. Right here. And um, now I'm here. Uh, which really isn't much of anything. There's a bunch of wood there. Uh, there is a very big hill. <laughs> And that's about it. Um, however, looks like this would be an okay spot to pitch a tent. I mean, it's not super flat, but, and it's lumpy, but it's not too bad considering. <laughs> oh man, this is funny. Didn't expect this. I didn't think about the river being uh, crazy and especially with the water levels so low at the other side I didn't expect this at all Let's see if there's anything up here lots of wood <laughs> that's gonna give me a workout I need to find a spot to make a privy too kind of away from the uh, I want to say prying eyes, but I don't think anybody's here. I don't know where the boot is. Oh, smokes. <laughs> Hoping there's like a nice flat spot up here somewhere, but uh, so far, no. Okay, I can work with this. I just have to get the canoe over here somehow. I guess I don't have to, I just move all my stuff over. This is decent. This 
is very decent. It's not my dream campsite, but I got a pretty nice view. <laughs> All right, I'm almost back at the canoe. Um, I was way over there. And uh, now that I'm coming back down here, I had thought that maybe under the tree here would be a, not under the tree, but right here, would be a decent spot for the tent. I was worried about getting to the forest because I thought I had to go up to make a privy, but just behind here to the right side is some forest areas that I could probably do something with. So, I think I might just stay put. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Oh man, crazy times. Look at this current. I'm gonna have the best time ever trying to get over there tomorrow to get out. <laughs> but, uh, we'll figure it out. I'll probably just let the water, let the current take me down and then come up the way that I came in. Because the current isn't as strong over there as it is over here, obviously. Hmm. Okay, well, I'm going to, uh, I don't know, put my thinking cap on and figure out what I'm going to do here. All right, so I walked along the shoreline, the canoes pretty slanted too and mossy but it's not too slippery so uh, much easier to walk through this way and uh, this is the opening that I was just checking out where um, I thought it would be a good spot to camp uh, you can see the current here and how crazy it is and uh, it actually changes directions here it goes this way and then here it splits and it starts going that way so technically I could probably walk the canoe all the way down here to that bay and then paddle up but even the current there is still super crazy and then I'd have to figure out how to get back over there so I don't think I'm going to do that. I'm either going to put the tent right where the canoe is and camp there or bring my stuff over here and camp here. I'll probably just leave the canoe. I don't need to bring it with me but I like to have it nearby. Uh, carrying the canoe and all my stuff and everything um, it's just because it's on a slope and if I go the other way I have to go straight up a hill and I slipped actually going up the hill with nothing in my hands and no boat on my head so I don't think that's a good idea the problem is that this isn't that much better than where I am now there's just more open area but it's just as lumpy and there aren't any perfect spots for my tanter even great spots for my tent, so I don't know. Well, I did want to face this direction, so at least I got that one. <laughs> oh man. Okay, I gotta put the phone down and uh, figure out what I'm gonna do here. Well, the sky keeps getting darker and darker, and uh, I can feel the temperature dropping now, it's supposed to drop, but. It just feels like it's gonna rain to me. And I'm over here playing fire pit. Uh, so what I did was, I got all these super flat rocks and put them down as the base. There are no uh, tree roots or anything in the exact vicinity. And then I have all these rocks um, lining the ground. And then I made a little border to keep the fire under control. I'm gonna work on it some more, but I just thought the way the sky was looking, it would probably be a good idea to get my tent set up first and get everything in there just in case it does start raining. And uh, if not, I'll continue with my pursuits here. Um, got a little bit of firewood. There's a piece there. There's a lot of dry wood um, just up in there in the forest. And I actually found a spot to make a privy and I already made a privy. So I just have to dig the hole. If you're never quite sure of how the ground is going to be, um, just lay down and try it. <laughs> I put the ground sheet down and uh, 
This is what I'm going to lie right here on this side of it. So I just lay down on it. It's actually really comfortable. And this side goes up a little bit, which is good to elevate my head for my acid reflux. So I'm actually quite happy with that. I'm going to set up the tent, get all my stuff set up, and we'll be back in a bit. All right, what's going on? Well, I've done most of the things. I'm still wearing my dry suit. Um, I've just glugged almost an entire uh, bottle of water. I was so thirsty. I didn't drink that much at work um, this afternoon, ever since lunchtime, because I knew I was going to be wearing the dry suit. And when I got here, I was just like so thirsty. I had to make the water and then wait for it to like process before I could drink it and I was just like come on come on and then I just like glugged half the thing and then I glugged the other half so um so I've got um all the things done I think pretty much I don't have uh, a lot of firewood I haven't done that yet but I've got the tent set up there you can see the uh, bit of a sunset there it's uh 7 35 something like that so um next thing I'm gonna do is get this dry suit off and then I'm gonna get dinner going um, I brought fettuccine garlic alfredo fettuccine sidekicks half a package uh, with some butter and some old cheddar and some chicken uh, the chicken was frozen I had it in the freezer at work all day it's already um, cooked and it's chopped up into like chunks so I really just need to boil water throw the um, fettuccine pasta in there let it simmer until it's cooked, throw the chicken in, put some cheese on it, and I'm good. Oh, I should have brought some bacon, that would have been good. Probably gonna cook, just cook on one of these flat rocks here, and then um, maybe I'll get a fire going after. I'm gonna see what the weather does too, because it still feels like it's gonna rain, and I don't have a tarp or anything, and plus there isn't really a place to set up a tarp, so I might have end up in the tent early if that happens. Um, so I'm just going to see what's going on first, but first priority is to make dinner because I'm hungry and it's getting really late. Uh, I've got the tent set up there. It's not too bad. Um, I have the place where I'm going to sleep right there. The problem is that if I'm sleeping on this side of the tent on that nice flat spot, I have to get in and out of the tent on this side. And that can be a little bit tricky because there's this ledge here, but uh, it's not too bad. So I've got all my stuff in there. And when I was setting up the tent, I have this really bright green dry bag that I just bought. It's even summer bag. Oh, here you go. And I had it sitting here, and I don't know if you can see, but there's fleas, little tiny fleas. Now, I'm thinking maybe these are still snow fleas. They're the first ones to come out. But I don't know if you can see them. They're super tiny. And um, they were all over my one dry bag, so. That's why I put everything in the tent. I've already put the backpack away, everything. You can see them on the thermometer too. They're all over the place. Thanks so much for watching. If you like what you saw, please click the subscribe button. Also click the bell for notifications. If you'd like to get more information on the stuff I use on my trips, please check out my website at camperchristina.com. Thanks, bye.